So then at 10 minutes after the top of the hour, out comes MJF for the match with CM Punk. So they got 50 minutes of television time in Chicago. And they had a very, very good match. And the story of the match is that I'd say about uh, 20 minutes in, MJF pulls off his tape. The referee's distracted. He wraps the tape around CM Punk's neck and then puts him in a choke. So he's actually choking him out with the tape. CM Punk crumples. The referee goes, he lifts his arm once. He lifts his arm twice. And he lifts his arm the third time, and the arm drops, and the referee calls for the bell, and these fans in Chicago are shocked that CM Punk has been defeated by MJF. So MJF puts the tape in his armpit. He starts celebrating, and, of course, the referee goes to raise his hand, and the tape falls out, and the referee figures out what happened, and so he announces that the match must continue. So then they go another 20 minutes. And, More uh, than 20 minutes. Yeah, probably 25 or so. Um, I think like 20, I think it was um, 15 and, and 24. The first, like the first one was 15. I'm thinking, okay, they're going to do like, because they went right for the near fall right away. So it's like, okay, it's going to be like a couple minutes. And they just kept going and going. And they went 25 more minutes. Yes. It was there, very good. There was, It was very good. There was a period where the crowd started to kind of, they got tired. And I think there were two reasons for that. I think, number one, they figured that since CM Punk had been beaten, but then the match was restarted, that there was no way he was going to lose a second time. Yeah. And I think the other thing is that because we have had these time limit draws, I think as it got to about the 50, 52 minute mark, I think there were fans thinking that it was going to go to a draw. And instead, they start hitting all these big near falls without like five minutes left. The and Pepsi plunge. There was a was Pepsi broadband. plunge off the uh, off the top yeah. rope, and finally out comes Wardlow. And what we see is Wardlow comes out. MJF is laid out on the outside. Wardlow gets right in CM Punk's face. They have a long stare down, and then Wardlow backs off, and the fans cheer. Punk throws MJF into the ring. Wardlow starts creeping towards the ring again. MJF is distracted. He ends up turning around. MJF punches him out with the diamond ring, and he pins him. He beats him for the second time in Chicago. And uh, after the match is over and he's celebrating, they actually have a shot that we never saw, which was during the stare down, Wardlow puts his hand behind his back, and he hands the ring to MJF. And then also after, to avoid what happened before with the ref catching the tape, um, MJF hands the ring back yes, to Wardlow. They did the a much better job. In. He did a much better job the second time hiding the evidence than he did the first time. Yes. So, yeah, MJF beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. And, listen, all I know is I've been watching this show the last few weeks now. And Adam Cole... I know he's still technically undefeated, but this dude just lost to Orange Cassidy last week. MJF just beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. And as a fan, when this show is over, like, it should be MJF and Hangman at the pay-per-view and CM Punk and Wardlow. And I don't know what they're going to do, but, I mean, that's what I thought when this show went off the air. They could go back to... See, the one thing when when um, MJF beat Cody Rhodes a couple of years ago in a very similar type of match, I didn't like and still don't like the fact that they just moved Cody Rhodes into another direction and he never wrestled him again and he never feuded with him. Because, um, you know, when you're shooting like this big hot angle and the heel cheats, you you should go back and do a feud and, and they didn't. And in this case, I think the same thing. I think they should do a feud. I think they should do something with CM Punk and um, MJF in a rematch before, you know, I mean, he could go for the title. I mean, he definitely could. But see, the thing is, I'm not thinking the thing, this thing should be over, but given that he beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. Yeah, you could make the argument. And he hasn't lost in forever. I mean, how is this guy not uh, ranked above Adam Cole in terms of going for the championship? I mean, he feels way hotter than Adam Cole right now because he just beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. And CM Punk can can bide his time, you know, wrestling Wardlow at the pay-per-view. 
And you could still go back to MJF and CM Punk at some point afterwards. This doesn't need to be the end. You could do that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, but there's nothing wrong with CM Punk against MJF in some sort of a stipulation match either. Sure, uh, you could do that. You can you can do that in Adam Cole and, and Hangman. Um, you know, um, and they also could take that away, but I don't think so just because of the way the interviews were going and everything like that, and especially on Friday. Um, you know, they pretty much go with the idea that, uh, you know, that, that Adam Cole's getting the winner. So, um, so I think that that's where they're going. I mean, I know that they've pulled stuff before, but, you know, where they go in this one direction and tell you pretty much this guy's the number one contender and then they pull it. It's been done. But, like, it, it was done with Hangman because Hangman had pulled out. So it was by necessity because the plan was Hangman when they did it and then they pulled it out for a reason. So, you know, unless, you know, Adam Cole's girlfriend is... I mean, the argument could be that MJF did lose once this year when he lost via disqualification with, with uh, uh, I think it was Sean Dean, it was Sean and, Dean. Uh, yeah. CM Punk. And Adam Cole's loss was in a lights out and sanction match. So, I mean, technically... This year, Adam Cole has a better record, but like, if you watch the shows, MJF is far more deserving of this championship match at this point than Adam Cole. Yeah, that's true. So we'll see where they go. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.